Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Thursday, May 25th and the energies in the day adds up and reduce to number one vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to the spirit animal, we are working with the fox, the fox, the wolf energy. I don't know why I thought fox, but I guess they kind of look somewhat alike, but the wolf energy. And I guess, you know, fox came to mind. And when I think about the fox and the wolf, I think about, say, how wise these animals are and their ability to just like survive independently. So with the wolf energy coming out and the day adding up and reducing to the number one vibration, it brings me to say something about independence, fresh start. I mean, the day does add up and reduce to the number one vibration and the number one energy talks about a beginning, a fresh start when it comes to a thing. And when it comes to say the tarot, we are working with the hermit energy in the reversal position. So when I think about, say, the hermit energy coming out in the reversal position, I think about like avoiding silence. I think about how silence feels so loud. I think about how we distract ourselves in ways to avoid going within. And then it comes to a point where we can't take it anymore and we have to surrender. And sometimes the surrender comes by force because we've exercised all possible options to soothe ourselves or to help ourselves to feel better and then we're forced to just be still be introspective and go within so when i think about the the wolf energy i think about the whole lone wolf aspect to the wolf i think about how the wolf is a packed animal but the lone wolf doesn't mean that the wolf has to stand alone forever i think about how the lone wolf goes off and finds its own community finds its own group but before even doing that, you know, introspection is necessary. I think about how the day adds up to the, you know, number seven, the day is the 25th and the number two is nurturing. The number five deals with change, sudden and unexpected change. And the number two energy is where we, our intuition comes through that gut feeling. And the number five is that clear audience. It's where you just, you know, you hear something and it's not a hearing where it's for some people, it might be different where it's like the hearing sounds like it came from outside of them, where some people it's like an internal hearing, but you know you had an experience. So I think about, say, the number two plus five add up to seven, and that intuition comes from a sense of knowing. But things, this brings me to say the importance of going within because the number 25 adding up to number seven with the day, and the number seven is an introspective energy. So when it comes to today, there will be an aspect to the day that, you know, feels a little bit silent, feels a little bit reflective, even though there's a lot of changes that's happening within the day. And even some of us could find ourselves feeling a little bit emotional. So I, I think of, say, feeling emotional, wanting to be in the presence of others, a lot of changes, but at the same time, like, you know, wanting to focus on self. But with the hermit energy and the reversal position in the lone wolf, what I was getting ready to say is how important it is for us to stop, reflect, go within to understand ourselves deeper before we connect to say, you know, other groups before we find our tribe type of vibe. What's coming to mind is say a person, um, you know, going through a breakup or a falling apart happens when it comes to a friendship or something happens 
that, you know, created some kind of a pain or discomfort and not allowing the time to reflect, to understand what happened exactly. And I feel like the best thing that we could do in situations like that is to find our role in a thing, not saying beat yourself up, point the finger at yourself. But I, I find with my own personal experience, when things don't go my way, it's an opportunity for me to understand myself better and gain more muscles. It's an opportunity for me to be stronger and take more control over my life whenever you know I experience something that really gets my attention and makes me sad or feel hurt or disappointment it's act, it's, or disappointed. It's actually a learning opportunity because when we're able to find our role in a thing, then we're able to, you know, make changes to ourselves because that's the only thing we really have control over how we choose to perceive a thing, how we choose to show up like ourselves is the only thing we can change. So when it comes to say the energies and today, you know, what's coming to mind is the importance of reflection and accountability. It's like recognizing your role in a thing doesn't mean that you're beating yourself up, but you're learning how you can show up different to make sure something never happens again if it's up to you. Um, the moon is in Leo. The moon is in a place, you know, that's courageous. The moon is in a place that's childlike and expressive, but we also have um, Lilith energy conjunct the moon and Leo. So with that, the moon is also in a place where our inner world is reflective on feeling either rejected as a child for say, whatever reason, maybe some people went through something and they felt like as a child, they weren't accepted or supported when it comes to something and different things might trigger or bring a person back to thoughts like that today or feeling outcasted or villainized by the mother or the family, the mother, the family, the siblings, or even having an experience in childhood that made a person feel villainized when really they feel like they were the victim in the thing. And I feel like with the moon conjunct uh, Lilith and Leo situations pertaining to that can come up. So this is where we can find ourselves being a little bit like dramatic because of the different emotions that we're feeling and whatever triggers that feeling. If you do have that kind of feeling, just know that the thing that triggered it, like, you know, don't shoot the messenger type of vibe. The thing that triggered it is not your enemy. It's really something that's helping you to realize like, you know, how you could gain more peace and comfort in your life. Because for, for us to have a strong emotional reaction to a thing shows that that thing is unresolved and it needs our attention. So I feel like with the moon conjunct Lilith, in Leo, like something may come up around childhood or something might come up where a person is like, well, if I had gotten support at a young age, I would have been able to do this, that, or the next. Um, if I had got more, you know, if I wasn't laughed at or something pertaining to one's courage and one's ability to creatively express themselves can come up because with the day adding up and reducing to the number one vibration, and the number one having to do with brand new beginnings, like on a day like today, you could find yourself starting something new, or you could find yourself like gaining new perspective, which is like planting a seed and, you know, brings us into new things or just having a bunch of great ideas or new ideas to like move yourself forward. Of course, again, with the day adding up to the number seven, because it's the 25th, two plus five is seven, you know, that energy will cause us to be a bit reflective and introspective but with the number five from the day being the 25th and the month being you know the fifth month also there's a lot of sudden changes within the day it just feels like a day that feels stimulated meaning there's a lot going on but it could also feel like sleepwalking because there is such a deep introspective vibe to the day and jupiter rolls over the day so of course that jupiterian energy is amplified and Jupiter is in Taurus. So with Jupiter in Taurus, we got Jupiter in Taurus, Mercury in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, North Node in Taurus. Like ever since, you know, Mercury retrograded into Taurus, a lot of us could find ourselves putting big emphasis on material things. You know, some of us could say I'm not materialistic and things like that. But since um, Mercury went into Taurus and was retrograding, you know, we're reflecting on ways to create, you know, invest into the material world 
in the material realm to create more stability and comfort for ourselves ways to feel more safe and secure for some people it might be different investment ideas or even for others it might just be fantasizing about owning certain luxury items that you've always wanted to own and just you know with the transits in taurus it's like that energy feels amplified as you yearn more for those experiences or reflect on ways how you could create those experiences for yourself and some things about that might come up today I look at how the moon is negatively aspecting Jupiter so it's like the moon is in a place where it's in Leo yes where it's creative it's ex expressive where we're imaginative but at the same time with the moon and Leo that energy wants to be a big kid it wants to be free but with say um, but with uh the but with jupiter squaring the moon it's like the 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 amplifying aspect expansive aspect of jupiter which also conjuncts the north node which brings major focus on destiny and traditions and values squaring the moon and leo conjuncts lilith it brings me to like the inner world wanting to be free and not wanting to get involved in adulting matters where it's like with jupiter conjunct the north node in taurus it's like focus on doing adulting type things in order to achieve certain things or in order to get to a certain place in life and it's like both taurus and leo energy is fixed energy taurus is fixed earth which is you know practical fixed energy where um leo is fixed fire passion motivation and for me when it comes to passion and creativity and expression it's something that doesn't it, it doesn't feel good for me to like deal with repetition you know when it comes to something i'm passionate about is like it's like giving birth and expressing that energy and then moving on to something else where the taurus energy is more repetitive fixed energy that's where the stability comes in so i could see how the moon and leo the inner world you know is in a passionate expressive creative place doesn't want to focus on anything that'll be repetitive or feel like an anchor that holds us down and also to the moon conjuncts that Lilith placement where the inner world feels passionate creative expressive and even a bit dramatic as we reflect on you know certain things that make us feel like the underdog certain things that make us feel like we have to fight harder or do more than others because there wasn't enough support love or care when it comes to the mother the father or even the family because i feel like with the moon energy that's the mother the home and the family leo could be the father energy or childlike um you know childhood experiences and things like that so i feel like stuff pertaining to that coming up around like you know reflecting on our inner world and being passionate create creative and how that might be you know creating conflict when it comes to us going after certain material things or why we don't have certain material things and also to um and also to the the moon conjunct uh the lilith placements also making a square to pluto so it's like a t-square happening between aquarius energy um leo energy and taurus energy so it's like a t-square happening between the fixed between fixed energies so it's like aquarian energy is fixed air fixed mind fixed in one's ways when it comes to thinking taurus is fixed earth fixed in you know stability fixed in uh certain fixed in just the 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 structure of life and then leo energy fixed in motivation fixed in passion so to me when it comes to say that square happening when it comes to the fixed energies which deals with us as individuals our service to others and traditions foundation and stability when it comes to working out all of that energy to me it comes back to say what i mentioned with the hermit energy and the wolf first we have to stop and reflect on challenges that we've had or been having and see what the common denominator is when it comes to all of those challenges and see what needs to be addressed within ourselves what needs to be learned what needs to be understood about ourselves in order for us to create peace in order for us to create balance when it comes to that t-square so to me it's almost like setting certain boundaries with ourselves or with others within the world in order to maneuver in a way that just that that fits for us 
you know, it's, it's like giving ourselves grace and being patient with ourselves as we move forward and learn whatever it is that we need to learn. But more than anything, we need to make sure that we're always learning about ourselves in the process. And for me, the best way for me to learn about myself is to reflect on the things that challenges me the most, because the things that challenges me the most shows where um, I could put in work and get the most value by getting, you know, by making, getting stronger when it comes to my weaknesses is what I would say for that. You guys, such a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to book a reading with me or check out my weekly exclusive content only on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.